More than a dozen prominent conservative lawyers, including George Conway, the husband of White House counselor Kellyanne Conway, released a joint letter today calling for an expeditious impeachment of President Trump. The lawyers, many of whom have worked in previous Republican administrations, say the evidence already presented makes the, quote, undisputed case that Trump violated his oath of office. In the letter, they write, quote, we have not just a political candidate open to receiving foreign assistance to better his chances at winning an election, but a current president openly and privately calling on foreign governments to actively interfere in the most sacred of U.S. democratic processes, our elections. For more, I am joined by one of the lawyers who signed that letter, J.W. Verrett, who's also a former Trump transition member, and Greg Nunziata, a former Republican Senate Judiciary staffer. Thank you uh, to both of you for joining us. Um, J.W., let me start with you. I, I, the word expeditious, saying you would like a, a quick, a speedy impeachment process. What do you have in mind there, and why is that so important? Well, I think if, if Speaker Pelosi has decided to focus impeachment solely on the Ukraine issue, we already have an admission from the defendant. We've got an open and shut case. He admitted he put pressure on the Ukraine president to open and uh, to, to, to provide dirt on his uh, political opponent. He openly admitted that. That's uh, also noted in the notes of the conversation and is consistent with the whistleblower's report. We know that he uh, worked to remove a legitimate ambassador to facilitate that illegal activity. And we know that he's been non-compliant with subpoenas. That's already three counts in the articles of impeachment. I, I'm not sure there's much left to develop. Um, uh, of course, we want a thorough uh, uh, work here, but this is not the trial. This is just the indictment stage on the House side. And so we hope that the process will be expeditious. Uh, let me ask you, too, just given the, the nature of who is signing this letter, you, you and, and others, backgrounds uh, in conservative side, the Republican side, it, it, the hope here, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but the hope here is that you are reaching specifically Republicans in, in Congress? Uh, we hope that they'll listen to us and we hope the American people will listen. Um, I, I, I've been disappointed with a number of House members uh, who I used to admire, uh, frankly, um, although I will draw a sharp contrast with some of your prior guests in that I think it's appropriate for Senate Republicans to remain silent because, of course, their role as a juror in the essentially trial phase of the impeachment is important. And so I think it's appropriate for them to either remain silent, certainly not aggressively defend the president. But the House members need to get involved here because I think the judgment of history has already begun. We mentioned George Conway. He's also part of this letter. He also spoke out yesterday about White House efforts to block the impeachment inquiry, specifically that eight page letter from the White House that explained why they're not willing to cooperate. This was trash. I mean, this was trash. I mean, basically, the thrust of the thrust of it is that there are some kind of constitutional obligations that the House has failed to meet that therefore that, that, that therefore render its impeachment inquiry illegitimate and unconstitutional, which is complete nonsense, because all the Constitution says is that the House has the sole power of impeachment. Uh, Greg, you tweeted that the White House letter was, quote, bananas. You wrote this. No member of Congress should accept it, no matter his or her view on the behavior of Pelosi, Schiff or Trump. I, I think you've said you don't consider your position on this anti-Trump. You consider it pro-separation of powers. It sounds like you're trying to make the institutional case here uh, for this process. I, I guess what I'd be curious is in the age of political polarization that we live in, where you look at Trump standing with Republican voters, and it seems to guide how Republican politicians approach him. Does the institutional case hold any weight? Yeah, w w the, the way our politics have gone, it's harder and harder to make that case. I mean, we've certainly seen uh, this, not just with this administration. Uh, in past administrations, members of Congress are increasingly inclined to support the president of their party, even when that president uh, commits misdoings, even when that president exceeds his constitutional authority. Uh, but we really need a Congress to do more than that. We need a Congress to stand up for its own power. We need a Congress to think uh, to the future. You know, I would ask Republicans in Congress uh, to 
to consider the fact that we had a Democratic president just a few years ago. We will have another Democratic president in the future. And they're going to want those powers that this White House letter so casually dismisses and tries to claim uh, an executive branch veto over the oversight and investigation uh, functions of Congress. And congressmen need to need to think uh, longer and think institutionally. And yeah, it's very important that Congress has those powers in order to do its job. What is your sense? Are you familiar with how the, the political process works? What, what is your sense? of what it would take for Republicans to publicly say what you're saying? Well, to, to, to publicly argue for the, for the power of Congress to have a legitimate uh, proceeding, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to hear more of them say that. I don't think there's a big risk in that. I think Republicans should feel comfortable saying that, that they have not heard uh, the case made for the impeachment, much less removal of the president yet, but they are, are, uh, uh, respect the, the powers that the Constitution gave Congress and that they want to hear the facts. And they want the White House uh, to, to allow people to testify and explain what happened uh, around these series of events. All right, Greg Nunziata, J.W. Verrett. Thank you both for joining us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.